as Hurricane Dorian moves ever so slowly away from the Bahamas, we want to again show you that side by side or top to bottom photo that we showed you earlier today on the top is satellite imagery of what Bahamas, uh, the Grand Bahama Island looked like before the hurricane. I want to point you to this. That's the International Airport. Uh, Morgan Chesky told us it is underwater right now. Let me show you this bottom picture now. He wasn't kidding when he said underwater. Grand Bahama Island is so underwater that, in fact, we have had to outline in yellow all those things that used to be land in Grand Bahama Island that is now water. So you can see that the island is now, it, it looks like less than half of the territory of what was Grand Bahama Island is now actually above water. That's how dangerous this is. Um, Dorian planted itself, as you know, on top of these islands, and this gives you some impression of the massive power of these storms. They are remaking coastal lines as they roll, roll through. And as rescue and recovery crews work to reach these islands, uh, Stephanie spoke with one man in Freeport this morning, Sam Teicher, who spoke to me yesterday about what he's experiencing. I mean, this is completely unprecedented. It's completely unnatural. Um, I don't know how to describe this other than we're in the middle of a climate emergency right now because nothing like this has ever been seen before. There are people that have been through series of Cat 5s, Cat 4s, Cat 3s, and no one really has any explanation or way of um, grounding this experience um, compared to anything they've gone through before. Climate emergency. We're in some sort of a climate emergency. Joining us now is Monica Medina. She's the founder of Our Daily Planet and the former principal deputy administrator for the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, which is where we get all of this information. So if anybody knows anything about this stuff that he was talking about, this climate emergency, your organization did. The government does. The military in the United States does. There's something to what these people are saying, that the intensity and frequency uh, of the high intensity storms uh, has changed. It has, Allie. Thanks for having me on, Allie and Stephanie. It is um, definitely a big change from the time even when I was administrator. And when you look at the numbers, they just don't lie. The last three years have seen five Category 5 hurricanes, and there have been 13 since the year 2000, which is more than a third of what we've seen in all of um, keeping the records on these storms. So people who would like to say that that's not correct often point out the fact that there are lots of hurricanes, there always were lots of hurricanes. People who study climate as you do uh, understand that we're not saying that climate change or the warming of the oceans has created more hurricanes, it's the intensity. Exactly. It's not that there are any one storm is caused by climate change. It's that they're made much worse by climate change. And we've written about this repeatedly at our Daily Planet. A study after study has shown that the storms are getting worse. And the, the reasons are because of the increased wind speeds, because of the higher storm surge and the increased rainfall. And when I think about how this storm um, is behaving, it reminds me a lot of Hurricane Harvey that sat over Houston for days and days. And as a result, result, 30,000 people were homeless, made homeless by that storm. And um, you've talked about it already on your show. The devastation, the destruction is disproportionately impacting uh, frontline communities and the people who can least withstand um, this kind of disruption in their life. Well, let's talk about those frontline communities, because what can we do about the dangers? You know, presidential candidate Andrew Yang says, well, time to just pack up and move to higher ground. That's easier said than done much easier said than done. We need to know where those problem sites are. Where are our soft spots? Where do we have critical infrastructure? Where do we have bridges and roads that are important for our evacuation purposes? Where do we have trailer parks? Um, in Andrew, Hurricane Andrew, way back in the 90s, that was one of the most devastating places where people lost their life, lives was in those trailer parks. So we need to know where those soft spots are and we need to figure out how to move those people. And in some cases, it's even the opposite. Um, in Miami, neighborhoods are being um, overtaken by wealthier people, lower income neighborhoods who are moving to higher ground and moving those lower income residents out and pushing them back into the places that are most dangerous. Hey, MSNBC fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down there and click on any of the videos here to watch the latest interviews and highlights. You can get more MSNBC for free every day with our newsletters. Just visit msnbc.com newsletters to sign up now.